Hello and welcome to the Pico Voice Rhino speech to intent tutorial. Rhino is a speech to intent engine that can infer intent from spoken commands within a given context. For example, a coffee machine that can understand coffee making related commands like make me a small coffee, but not commands that are outside of that context like tell me the weather today. This specificity allows for better performance and accuracy. To get started, we need to create a context. Give it a name and select the language that you want to use. There's currently 17 languages available. We'll go with English. Next, we can select a template to start with. A template is just a context that comes with some boilerplate. We'll leave it as empty. Right away, we see some instructions on how to use the Rhino editor, which is essentially what we'll be going over in this tutorial. You'll always be able to see these tips by clicking on this tips bar in the bottom corner. Now let's start working on our context. We're going to design a context for a coffee machine. First, let's create an intent. You can think of an intent as a container for a group of related expressions, which are phrases that we want Rhino to listen for, like make me a small coffee. Let's test this to see what happens. Make me a small coffee. Eventually, in your code, this is what Rhino will return to you when it hears that expression. It knows that someone ordered a beverage, but it's missing key details like the size and type of beverage. That's where slots come in. You can think of a slot as a variable. Let's make one for size. Here, we'll add in all the different options for size. Now we can replace small with the size slot. Just a note, there are some basic built-in slots, like for percentages or integers, but right now we want our size slot. So we'll select that and give it a variable name. Make me a small coffee. And now we can see the size. Now what if someone starts their order with something other than make me? For that, we use macros. Macros are used to represent a list of possible phrases that we want to detect, but don't care about which phrase was said. We don't need to know if someone said make me versus get me a small coffee, just that they said one of those phrases. Let's create a macro. Add the different phrases that people can start their order with. Now we can replace make me with our macro. I would like a medium coffee. Again, we won't see our macro show up in the inference since we only care that one of the options was detected. If you need to know what option was said, then use slots. Similar to macros are choices. You can use square brackets to create a logical or between phrases. Make me an extra large coffee. Could I have a small coffee? This does work the same as a macro. We could have done this. Instead of making our brew macro. But sometimes it's easier to alias a list as a macro if the list is longer or if you want to reuse the list. Lastly, you can use round brackets to indicate an optional phrase. An extra large coffee. Make me a small coffee. That's all there is to creating a custom context. When you're happy with how the context works, click on this blue download icon in the corner. Select the platform you're building for. We'll just go with web and click download. In a few seconds, you'll see a zip folder in your downloads containing the .rhn file 
for the context that was just created. This is the file you'll eventually reference in your code to use this custom context. To see instructions on how to do that, follow one of these suggested links to go to the relevant docs. So for example, if you're building for React, then click on React, and follow the instructions here on how to use this .rhn file in your code. You can also find the quick start guides for the other available SDKs all on this left sidebar. Coming back to the editor, we'll go over two helpful features that can help you with your workflow. The first one is snapshots. Snapshots allow you to save the current state of your context. Say you like the current state of your context and everything works well, but you want to experiment with some changes. You can create a snapshot and then keep working on making changes while being able to revert to the snapshot anytime. Let's go through an example. Say we want to save this current state of our context. To do that, click the Create Snapshot icon and click Save Snapshot. Now, say we want to see if editing our expression improves our context. I would like a small coffee. Obviously, that broke something, so we want to revert that change. Because we created that snapshot earlier, we can click the View Snapshots icon and load the snapshot that we saved. Note that the current progress will be overwritten if any edits are made to the snapshot. Now we can see that the original expression is back. The toolbar also shows that we are currently viewing this snapshot. If you now want to revert again to the previous state, click on Head. For such a small change, you probably don't need snapshots, but hopefully you can see how snapshots can be really helpful when you're working with much bigger contexts and making bigger, less manageable changes. Another feature is working directly with YAML. YAML is a file format, and when we're editing in the console, under the hood, we're really just editing a YAML file. So, if you prefer to work with the file instead of using the console, you can simply export the YAML file here. Work in the file, like deleting all the slots for size, and maybe changing this to regular. And import it back in when you want to test it or download. And as you can see, our changes are reflected in the console. That's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment below or visit our GitHub linked in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching and happy building.